We're going to take a look at a Betfair correct score trading strategy in this video and it is a strategy that involves trading the nil-nil, the one-nil and the nil-one score lines at the same time. Could this be a profitable strategy for trading the correct score market on Betfair? I'm going to show you the method step by step and then also show you some real life demonstrations of the strategy itself taken on the Betfair exchange plus a sting in the tail. So go grab a pumpkin spice latte or a nice cold beer and let's get into it. So to get straight to the point, the main idea behind this strategy is that we know that at the start of a football match, the price on the nil-nil is gonna steam in like this. And it's also gonna be the same movement on the one nil to the home team and also on the nil one okay so the idea is that we're going to back to lay on all three of these outcomes because they're all going to move uh similarly okay and then the idea is that we're, we're spreading our risk okay a across these three different outcomes okay so let me explain the strategy here step by step now the main way of doing the strategy that i've seen a lot of people uh, put out there is to Dutch the nil nil, one nil, and nil one score line. And I'll show you how you can Dutch that very, very quickly in just a moment, in case you're confused about that. Um, and then we just let the match go in play. And then basically, if no goals are scored, we green up for around 10% profit within the first 10 minutes. That's the idea with those who use this strategy. They want to make that quick 10% and then be out within the first 10 minutes. And obviously, if a goal is scored, you would be exiting for a loss. And so this is a strategy that I believe it, it was shared on YouTube a while back, and it's been shared in various guises all over the internet, with some even charging big money for this method, all right? Now, I still get emails today about whether or not this is a good approach to try, and this is what the Sports Trading Life channel is all about, okay? So I'm gonna show you some quick live examples of this strategy so you can see exactly how it works. And by the way, before we get into that, don't forget to click the like button if you do like this type of content. It helps you to get more videos like this show up in your feed, and it helps me to know which videos you guys really want so I can do more of them. Click the like button if you're liking what you see. Let's check out this method recorded on the Betfair exchange. So let me show you how it works. We've got Crystal Palace here against Newcastle. Markets are expecting a low score in match. So we back nil-nil. It's just about to kick off. Nil-one and one-nil. And you would do this right before kickoff as well, okay? Uh, then we click on stake. Click stake there. And we're going to use a £100 stake to keep this all very simple. And it will just calculate the, uh, the, the staking for us automatically. I and mean, we just place the bets just like that, okay? And then they're in the market. And then it is just a case of uh, letting us play for 10 minutes. And then we get out, uh, well, hopefully with a profit. So yeah, Crystal Palace versus Newcastle just about to kick off. And I'll update you when the match is underway. And so here we are, 11 minutes in this one. Crystal Palace against Newcastle. All the prices have moved in. Let's just uh, cash this out. So you can see the nil-nil back to 9.4. That's moved into 7.4 to lay. Nil one moved in from 11.5 into 9.6 to lay, and then one nil from 7.2 into seven. So then one nil didn't really move that much, but let's uh, just green that out. But in the end, we made more than 10% in this one uh, in the early stages of, of this. So, so within 10 minutes. So it actually went better than some would describe with this strategy anyway. So uh, yeah. Uh, in and out within the first 10 minutes of this one, Crystal Palace nil, Newcastle nil, and we've made a 17, pretty much 18% return on our stake in that uh, short period right there. So this strategy looks good at first glance, right? However, I have to ask you, did you spot the floor? And I'm not talking about whether when a goal goes in, we have to take a loss. I mean, we all know about that. That's pretty standard in this sort of time decay trading but there is actually a much bigger flaw to all of this and i'm going to explain that right now we are doing this but we're basically backing under one and a half goals okay if we're backing nil nil one nil and nil one 
we're basically backing under one and a half goals. So this is something I've had to kind of explain to a few people that have presented this strat strategy to me down the years and say, well, why wouldn't you just back under one and a half goals? And then some will argue back and say, well, it's actually better this way. The markets move quicker and all that sort of thing, which we'll get onto again in just a moment. But you are basically backing under one and a half goals and you're just doing it the long way. And there are issues with that because the correct score market versus the one and a half goals market, there's, there's going to be liquidity issues. You're going to see more money in the one and a half goals market uh, versus the correct score market is, is just the way, it, the way it is. And so if you wanted to scale up the strategy, you're going to find a little roadblock there. But of course, the getting in and out is, is a big factor when there is a lack of money and what you, you'd be much better served doing this on the one and a half goals market and also keep in mind if we're doing this on the correct score market we're looking for three different prices to move fluidly in order for us to exit for the expected profit and again it kind of comes back to the liquidity side of things because the nil nil might move the one nil to the home team or the favorite might move nicely but the nil one which no one's really interested in backing the nil one to the underdog maybe that's not moving so great and so you might have to wait even longer for the prices to line up exactly where you want them in, in order for you to make the profits that you're looking for and as i said one of the big arguments that a lot of people who presented this strategy to me say, hey, the correct score market, it moves quicker. I've got, I've got more of an, of an advantage. <laughs> well, that's not exactly the truth either. But anyway, I wanted to demonstrate why this approach is flawed, a little bit flawed, and, uh, and just show you that people are actually just giving themselves extra work in order to achieve the same outcome. So I went and did the same trade on some other matches, but I also backed under one and a half goals market at the same time with the same stake. And this is what happened. This is interesting. Have a look. So 10 minutes in on this one, Valladolid against Levante. And we're just going to cash this out and see what the uh, how the cash out develops. Obviously, three different outcomes, so it's not so simple. But uh, So it looks like we're going to be able to cash this out for seven, seven pounds. Let's have a look. Not quite the, the kind of the 10% a lot of people would tell you to go for. But it looks like it's around eight pounds. Okay, let's call it eight pounds. Let's look at the one and a half goals market and look at that. We can cash out there for 13 pounds, okay? So you can kind of see the floor already there where we're, we're, we're doing pretty much the same thing. Uh, we're, we're going for under one and a half goals. Let me just try and green this out fully. Remember, we're going for under one and a half goals by backing nil nil, nil one, and one nil, and we're ending up with that profit on the on the kind of confusing correct score market. Where if we just kept it simple and went on the one and a half goals market, then well, we'd actually even make more money. <laughs> Remember, you've got three different outcomes, and so you kind of need a very reliable market as well if you really want to cash out for the full profit with this one. But uh, yeah, th th this little demonstration that I'm showing you, pretty much the same trade we're doing. However, you're going to get a be better result keeping it simple on the one and a half goals market. So anyway, Valladolid nil, Levante nil. Uh, interesting demonstration for you right there. So in this match, we got caught out by a goal. Should have been out by the 10th minute. <laughs> we're in by 12 minutes and then got caught by a goal. But anyway, uh, look at that. Uh, we can cash out here for a 70 pound loss off that 100 pound stake so it's like 70 percent but we've also done the same on the one and a half goals market and that's also 70 percent okay so correct score uh actually 71 pounds they're offering me there i mean it's going to fluctuate because the prices are moving all over the place but then one and a half goals market if you wanted to get out straight away after after the goal it's the same loss as well. So there isn't really an advantage if you are caught out by the earlier goal, trading on the one and a half goals market versus the correct score as well. So just, just wanted to, to point that out. Uh, this is a Bundesliga match. It's Wolfsburg 1, Werder Bremen. Sorry, Wolfsburg 0, Werder Bremen 1. However, it's not totally, totally flawed. And I do just want to show you one, maybe one tiny advantage that you could have trading this way on the correct score market overdoing it on the uh one and a half goals market 
And it could be to do something like this. Now, Crystal Palace, nil-nil uh, against Newcastle at half-time. So we've got 17 pounds of green on the correct score market. But let's just say that we thought that in the second half, based on what we've seen, I, I don't know, I haven't been watching this match. <laughs> but based on what we've seen, we think, hey, do you know what? I think Crystal Palace going to take the lead. So what we could do is we could just take that 17 pounds of green and then back the 1-0 to Crystal Palace and that would then give us 85 pounds worth of green and then depending on when Crystal Palace take the lead we could cash that out or we could just let it run as a free bet I mean we are expecting this to be a low scoring match and maybe it's going to be a 1-0 either way and let's just say we thought it was going to be 1-0 to Newcastle and then we just go to the 1-0 put that 17 pounds of green on uh, the 1-0 to Newcastle then we've got 129 to play with and yeah, like I said, we could trade that out if Newcastle take the lead. If they take the lead very, very late, then you're going to be making a substantial profit and you could uh, double that 17 pounds of green up or more, depending uh, when, when the goal arrives. So that is one kind of tiny advantage of doing this on the correct score market versus doing this on the one and a half goals market. Is it worth doing it for this sort of advantage? Only you can decide okay so anyway that was just a quick thing i wanted to throw in there as well it's not all doom and gloom it's not totally <laughs> a bad or pointless uh, strategy there are still some things that you might want to explore with it and so the key takeaway from this video and the moral of the story is that when you look at any strategy any sort of trading strategy always ask questions about it and always ask yourself this and always look to see if a strategy actually has any sort of advantage over a simpler approach because i've seen it all i've seen it all down the years where people tell me hey we want to back this then lay that then wait five minutes then back this and trade that out and then wait another five minutes and then back this market head to that market and so on and so on and so on and then i look at all this and i'm like you know what you could just go to this market back it at this price, lay at that price, and you're achieving exactly the same thing, okay? So anyway, that's the key takeaway. Just always, always ask questions and see if there is actually an advantage from the strategy you're using over just a more simple approach. If you are someone who is new to football trading, make sure to download this freebie right here, the seven steps to football trading success. The link to this is in the description of the video. So just click on the description, you'll see the link, click on that, enter your email address and we'll send it right to you okay it's very very simple enter your email address send it right to you and like i said it's absolutely free and it's a good uh, starting point in your football trading journey so definitely grab that while it's still available and if you haven't done so already hit the subscribe button uh, hit the notification bell and there's also a couple of other really really good videos that i think you will like on the screen right now. So check those out and I'll see you in the next video.